Yeah, so I'm Naomi Ray. I hold joint appointments at the Institute for Molecular Bioscience and the Queensland Brain Institute at UQ. The fundamental question that underlies my research is why are there differences between people? For example, why are some people tall? Why are some people short? Why do some people get disease and some people don't? And within those affected by disease, why are the symptoms and progression so variable between people? These questions are complex and the answers likely involve both genetic and non-genetic factors. I focus particularly on the genetic factors as these give clues for other biological research. So in my research programme, I actually study many diseases and when I joined UQ, I was asked to also study motor neuron disease. So to start with, we know that for about 5% of people diagnosed with ALS, they come from families with many affected family members, which is a very strong clue for DNA involvement. For many of these families, the DNA course has actually been found, usually a single DNA letter that is actually different in those affected family members compared to everyone else in the world. We've learned a lot about ALS by studying these families, providing the clues which have underpinned much of the research you've heard about so far. However, my research focuses on the 95% of people with ALS who don't come from such families. For these people, there's still likely to be an underlying genetic susceptibility to ALS, which then compounds with other risk factors and then which together lead in some unknown way to disease. The genetic contribution here is likely to be complex, involving many DNA variants. And for these people, we can't learn much about the genetic contribution by studying their family members, because we know that the family members hardly ever get affected. Instead, it's really the particular combination of DNA letters that affected people have. So to learn about the genetics of this common type of ALS, we need to actually contrast the DNA of those who do get ALS to study samples. So when I joined UQ, I realised that although some ALS research clinics in Australia were collecting DNA, a lot of people with ALS were not actually being given the opportunity to contribute to this sort of research. We received funding for three years, actually from the Ice Bucket Challenge, which was awarded through the Motor Neuron Disease Research Institute of Australia. So although my interest is, is what we can learn from the DNA, we need as much information about people to really disentangle all the contributing factors. Success of the SALSA project helped bring in actually additional funding from the National Health and Medical Research Council. In addition, Fight MND liked what we'd done. Fight MND recognised that the SALSA project was building up an important data resource for research and that many people with ALS are very pleased to be able to contribute to research in this way. Fight MND recognised that the clinical trials often have inclusion exclusion criteria which are actually based on genetic information and this information is needed prior to the start of the clinical trial. Also, it's important to make sure that people across the whole of Australia have equal access to these trials. So with funding from Fight MND, and also working closely here in Queensland with MND and me, who in turn work closely with MND Queensland, we're trying to ensure that everyone in Australia with ALS has the opportunity to provide a blood sample together with their symptom and lifestyle information and also, just to be clear, there are many people who have less common forms of MND, such as PLS, frail arm subtype, etc. Our biological sample collection includes all these subtypes. And last, to understand the genetic and non-genetic risk factors that are associated with the motor neuron diseases, we need to make contrast with people not affected. So in June, we're actually planning to launch a community recruitment. The last 10 years has actually seen an incredible advances with what we can measure from a simple blood sample. And so this gift is really worth its weight in gold. We work very closely with research teams around the world. For example, our first samples collected under the SALSA project are being analysed together with 20,000 samples from around the world. And when put together, have identified ALS risk genes, which seed into many other areas of research. In addition, we've made sure that our data collection measures align very closely with those collected in other countries, which really helps future-proof the data resource, ensuring that we can integrate things down the track. In fact, one of the measures that's perhaps the most complex to track are the cognitive changes that occur for some people during the progression of their disease journey. 